Okay, so hello everybody. Just uh, joining and getting ready for uh, coming on. So I'm a few minutes late there, just sorting out tech. <laughs> So just seeing who comes on board, giving it a few moments. So um, today's 20 minute chat within Tantra, I decided to have a look at you know the power of meditation and there are many, many forms of meditation around. Um, and I've learnt that um, I was a Buddhist once practicing Buddhist meditation um, and doing mindfulness and now I do Tantric meditation and I've done various other meditations for various other spiritual practices and it's interesting to see and perceive what people think meditation is um, and the benefits it has to offer you. Hi Lindsay, nice to see you on here, <laughs> nice for you to join us. So um, yes, yeah, seeing if anyone else comes in. So this morning's chat I kind of um, was thinking about, this afternoon should I say, I was kind of thinking about um, when we have um, stress and conflict in our life and what is the biggest um, tool that I've been given or the most powerful tool that I've been given to deal with any stress or conflict and um, that's definitely the power of meditation um, so I wanted to have a little talk about this and what it means for people um, and even if you already practice meditation maybe just to have a think about um, what meditation is from a tantric point of view and maybe how that differs and how that may offer um, some added depth uh, to the meditation techniques that you already use. So in Tantra, Tantra is a very complete uh, spiritual system uh, that studies the energy of the metaphysical aspects of the universe, so how energy works in the whole of the universe. And um, when we say we do Tantric Yoga, when we talk about yoga, we don't just mean uh, the physical stretching yoga, um, that everyone does and even beyond that uh, there are people that are practicing more spiritual yoga, Visanya yoga um, that has a more spiritual aspect to it that comes from a Vedic background but again it, that's not working with energy so Tantra is about how the whole matrix of the universe interconnects and that everything in the universe, everything that we can see that is matter is made of energy and therefore we're applying these concepts to, um, to the yoga and to the meditation that we do so in Tantra, yoga, the word yoga, well, in Sanskrit, the word yoga actually means union. So it's the union of yourself with the whole cosmos, with the whole universe, with the, with the form of creation. So it's unifying all of yourself within yourself, and then unifying yourself within the cosmos, within creation. And therefore, yoga is not just about the physical aspects of, um, of uh, practicing asanas and uh, stretching the body and making the body flexible. It goes much further than that. It actually involves various techniques um, that include um, the guidelines of ethics, um, that include practices with the breath, um, that actually are empowering the body and filling the body with pranic energy, like vital life force energy from the universe around us. It also encompasses um, aspects of um, pratyahara, how to withdraw like a turtle, your senses from the outside um, inward so that you can be fully in your inner world and then focusing on the meditation. Um, it also covers um, uh, the aspect of um, dhyana, which is developing concentration of the mind and there's no meditation without the concentration of the mind so you need to be able to develop that for meditating deeply and then it talks about meditation itself um, and then in yoga the final element is samadhi which means self-realization having the full realization of yourself and your place um, and your being within the the cosmos within the universe so whether you want to believe in spirituality or not, that's irrelevant um, for meditating because meditating itself brings many, many, many benefits. And I'm going to go through that as we move forward. But it's very, very practical um, in helping to solve a lot of our daily life issues, um, in actually helping us to access creativity, um, and in um, finding much more peace and balance within ourselves. Um, so it's a powerful tool, irrelevant of whether you want to dive into the spiritual esoteric journey um, that meditation can take you on, 
or whether you just want to use it for everyday life to bring you much more harmony, balance, insight um, and calm, calmness. So I know that whenever I have any issues in front of me that the main thing that I need to do and make the time to do is just to sit down and do a meditation. And in the process of the meditation, I allow myself to let go of um, being entangled in the energy of what's distracting me, of what's creating the disturbance for me, uh, whether it's something anxious or even whether it's something joyful that I need to make a decision for. Um, I can distract myself from being engaged in the energy of, uh, of the drama of that situation or the overwhelm of that situation or the over-enthusiasm of that situation. I know myself personally um, that I definitely used to have a habit when I was much younger of being very impulsive, very spontaneous, and I would get very excited. And I know I'd sit in business meetings and people would be sharing their ideas. And I'd go, oh my God, that's such a great idea. That's so wonderful. And I would jump in and I'd agree to everything. And then when I calmed down the next day, I would realize that maybe I didn't actually have the capacity uh, resource-wise or energy-wise or time-wise to maybe agree to everything that I'd have committed to in the moment of excitement. So one of the things I'd learned to do was hit the pause button um, and actually slow myself down and say to people, do you know what, I'm really excited by this. There's so many possibilities here. I just need to go away and have 24 hours to think about it and to see what I can genuinely add um, to the equation because I was too enthusiastic. So it's also from a positive side of um, life uh, not necessarily just dealing with negative things, just to bring you into balance and allow you the space to find out what really needs to work for you. And, you know, I used to facilitate a lot of uh, the seven habits in Stephen Covey's work and very much at the beginning we talk about, you know, that pause button being really, really important in our behaviours. Um, that, you know, instead of reacting and responding straight away, we can hit the pause button then we allow sort of four things to happen, which is that we can actually allow ourselves to detach from the situation and see it more clearly for what it truly is without our own emotional input positively or negatively that we can actually access our creativity and our imagination um, that we can um, also um, understand you know from the point of self-realization the self what it actually is from self that we need in that situation and from there we can actually make a much better choice of how we want to respond or react and so meditation is kind of a more um, effective, uh, sort of not say effective, but more of a solid tool of just doing that, not just having the pause button in the mind, but actually taking that as a physical expression of what we do to sit down, take the time, take the space, and enter this state of pause to allow us to connect within our inner selves to the innate knowledge that we have within. And it's very, very interesting because you know, we tend to gather a lot of knowledge, we you know, research a lot, we do a lot of courses, especially online at the moment, everyone's doing courses. And so we gather lots and lots of information for the written word, the book and everything. And we think that that's knowledge and that we need to kind of retain that. And in all honesty, in modern day times, there's so much information, there's no way the brain can hold all of that, especially not when it's not, when it's not trained to be able to have that capacity because we only use a very small percentage of the capacity of our mind. So using meditation actually allows two things to happen. One, it allows us to actually develop and train the mind to expand, expand that capacity, to utilize that capacity and open that up and use it as a storage space. But it also expands our conscious awareness and therefore, in expanding our conscious awareness, it allows us to become much more aware of our own innate knowledge um, from our own experiences and also from the knowingness of the universal consciousness of life. You know, Freud, sorry, not Freud, Carl Jung, um, he was very, very much in belief that we all access a human consciousness of the journey of humanity and in there is an innate knowledge that we carry through our genes and then energetically within our consciousness through that and we can access that at all times. So from a tantric point of view it's the other way around. What we would actually say is that there's a huge innate knowledge of the universe within you because you're a divine soul um, and therefore you have access to all of the knowledge that is the universe. You just need to tune in to yourself. 
And meditation allows you to do that process to actually tune into yourself to access that divine knowledge, as well as train the mind to have much more capacity. So it's a very, very powerful and very useful technique. And, um, and one of the things that's very interesting is, yes, at first it's very difficult. So you've all heard about the monkey mind and the mind wants to run around. The mind is used to being in control of us. We are not really used to being in control of the mind. Um, far from it. We think we are, but we're not. And we can see that very simply when we do very, very simple exercises that I teach in my uh, in my um, essentials of Tantra uh, online yoga. We do it both on and offline. But module one, level one, we teach these essentials. And we do very simple exercises. And people are just so shocked at how little control they actually have over their mind and their thoughts. Those who have been practicing meditation a lot, that's slightly different. But for those that haven't done it before, they're very, very surprised and suddenly it comes to the realization of how powerful that is. And there's also a very, uh, very good training program for the mind by a wonderful um, guy called John Kehoe, who's a, an interesting character. And he created a mind powers program that lasts for four weeks um, to practice becoming aware of your thoughts and how your thoughts really run amok with you and therefore how that impacts your life and start to train your thoughts and train your mind consciously. Um, and another very good teacher of this aspect is um, Joe Dispenza who's written a number of books about the subconscious and the mind and how you access that to manifest into your life uh, what you want, what you want to gain. So from a tantric perspective, um, we would turn around and say that most people that are meditating aren't really meditating, that most people are sitting in a state of becoming calm and contemplative and they haven't actually re yet reached um, the state that they would call, or the tantrics would call meditation. And how do you know this? Well, in the first state, what you're doing is training the monkey mind you're training the mind to uh, not to have no thought. You're aware that you have thought. Thought will always arise. It's like a stream running through you. Thoughts are always there and they're always existing. But you can choose to step back from the thoughts as if you are a fisherman at the side of a stream. You can either be in the stream trying to catch the fish chaotically as they jump all around you, or you can come back to the side of the stream and you can choose to throw your rod into the stream and catch the specific fish, the specific thought that you wish to explore, that you wish to engage with, whether that's positive or negative or contemplative, but you have the choice um, to put the rod out and catch the thought that you wish to be with or that you wish to explore. And so very much you can become an observer of your own mind and through becoming an observer of your own mind, you gently detach yourself um, from being engaged uh, with your thoughts without awareness. And now the other thing is that your thoughts are energized. They are powerful forces of energy. And what energizes them and amplifies them is emotion. So when you are thinking a thought, it connects normally with an emotion and that emotion will amplify that thought. So if it's a negative thought, you know how we can get caught into a negative stream of thinking once we've thought the negative thought, especially with, you, with, with a group of people, when people start chatting about that negative thought, everything amplifies in a spiral of becoming more and more negative because the energy there is that focus. Or in the same way you get a positive thought, you can really motivate and inspire the people around you as that positivity builds and everyone um, moves into the energy of that motivation and aspiration and inspiration and positivity. And it can create its very positive spiral of growth and amplification. So thoughts and emotions are very much connected and the emotions energize and amplify the energy of thoughts as well. So now we come back to Tantra, because as we said, Tantra is all about energy. And if thoughts and emotions are about energy, then uh, we are learning how to harness and utilize this and to be able to then through this uh, manage the energy to help us to reach higher states of consciousness or to expand our conscious awareness. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, you can go back to one of the earlier talks where I've talked about developing the consciousness of the mind and the concentration of the mind and why that's important. So, um, it's 100, Tantra is 100% energetically based, 
um, and that is um, there is power in this particular a um, aspect of working with meditation. And in Tantra, we use utilize a number of different techniques. So uh, we have uh, we normally start off with beginners with working with music meditation. And the reason for this is most people, as I said, their minds are very chaotic and very active, and they're jumping around. And so they actually need something to distract. But we're wanting to work with energy and change energy resonance because changing your moods and your feelings is just changing the energy resonance that you're at, then music is really, really powerful. And you can see this, there were experiments done where they had plants, and they had one plant where they were playing, you know, like heavy metal death music to it, boom, 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 heavy solid beat music and, and, and heavy metal music. And another plant they were playing um, Beethoven and Mozart to, classical music to, and the plant that had the heavy metal music shriveled and died and the plant that was actually being played Beethoven and Mozart was blossoming and blooming and growing and they did a similar experiment in schools with children and they had a, a one plant set up on one side where they had to give them insults to another plant set up on the other side where they had to give loving compliments and loving thoughts to and exactly the same thing happened it was the energy negative energy that was taking away or positive energy that was feeding so this is just like the law of resonance that happens energetically. So music, if we're wanting to open up the heart chakra, we can play music that's very specific to working on the heart chakra. And Mozart and Beethoven um, very much work with the Anahata chakra, most of their music. In fact, most classical music works on the heart chakra or the throat chakra, which connects you to space and time, or the third eye, which is your a mental power to see into the reality of all things and to have clarity of mind and focus. And then you have the crown chakra at the top, which is your gateway, uh, your divine connection with the cosmos. So we can work with these higher chakras, but also with the lower chakras, with the, the Manipura chakra, which it can be leadership and heroism and courage and self-confidence and motivation and willpower. So we can play more heroic music. So if you think of Angelus, or so, um, if you think of uh, Gladiator, some of the music that's played there, you can play that and that activates your heart chakra, the resonance there, and it, um, it's, it creates the energy and the resonance of heroicness in your being, and then you can feel very motivated and very inspired to do things. So music meditation is a very easy way to work in developing um, the change of energy resonance in your body without having to worry too much about the noisiness of the mind because you can just allow the mind to engage with listening to the music and actually as the music envelops the body the resonance of your being changes and adapts to the resonance of the music and builds that within your body so that's music meditation we also do at the beginning guided meditations and again this is really good for beginners because the mind has something the active mind the conscious mind has something to grasp onto and it can follow the voice and as the voice guides then the subconscious mind is being actually guided to do some deeper work at different levels. So a guided meditation, you need to be careful whose meditations you use and make sure that they are uh, good and appropriate in the suggestions that they're making. Um, but guided meditations is a very, also a very beautiful practice for beginners as well. And then another form of meditation that we use in Tantra, which is behind me here, um, we have a yantra on the wall, what we call a yantra. So this is a sacred geometrical shape. And again, this shape, um, in its sacred geometry, it accesses a specific energetic resonance. So this particular yantra is known as the Shiva yantra, and it accesses the energy of the Shiva consciousness, which very simply means the stillness and consciousness of everything before it is created, the, the absolute, the void, where if you were to be in very deep meditation, there is no thought, there is no sense of self, there is just being in the moment in the consciousness. This particular yantra works with that. So you get initiated into the energy by a teacher of that particular yantra, and then you can practice by meditating on it. Um, there are also mantras. So we have yantras, the geometrical shapes, but also mantras where you're given specific um, uh, uh, Sanskrit words that have a very divine and sacred meaning. They're like a sound. Um, and you, uh, they have a meaning specifically, and you repeat that mantra. So you can do a japa, where you silently repeat that mantra. I have a mala on here, myself, that I'm wearing, 
and there are 108 beads and um, in, uh, in, in Tantra and in uh, uh, the Hindu practice you would do uh, maybe the, you would repeat the mantra 108 times having the bead to guide you how many times you say it and you'd increase it by multiples of 108 and that, that allows you to bring the resonance connected with that particular mantra into your body so in Tantra you learn about the different mantras and you learn about the resonance of energy that you can attract into your body so it may be that you're wanting to attract in clarity and concentration of the mind. So you would have a specific uh, mantra for that. It could be that you're wanting to attract in openness and abundance. It could be that you're wanting to attract in uh, harmonious relationships. So each of these things, I think there's you know, there's over, over 1,000 different specific sacred mantras that you can learn and incorporate into your practice. And then there are other meditations that are meditation, but they also help to improve the concentration of the mind. Um, and there are various active meditations that you do, and you get initiated into those as the further up you go into practicing um, the, the yoga. So these active um, meditations, again, are just practicing you, practicing helping you to access different energies. So maybe the different chakras I've talked about again in a previous talk. You want to go and look up the one I did on the seven chakras and the resonance of energy and consciousness at those chakras. You can have a look at that. And um, so you can learn so through these different active uh, meditations, you can access these uh, particular resonances in different ways. So there are lots of very powerful ways to do that. We also can use sound. So we have uh, uh, a meditation called a uh, lion meditation. Uh, in which you um, use a mantra to initiate and start to hear a particular sound in the, of the universe and then you focus on that sound of the universe and again through doing that it changes your energetic uh, resonance and expands the consciousness of your mind. So the meditation in Tantra is not just to create peacefulness and balance and harmonization, it's actually to change and evolve your energetic resonance and the consciousness of your mind so that you can be much, become much more proactive and you can use the meditation to change the state of your being, your emotional state, or to be creative or to ask questions. So you can sit in meditation as you develop um, the concentration of the mind and you can place a question in there and be with that question and see what comes up for you maybe in the actual meditation itself or afterwards. You become more aware around you and you start to perceive things. Uh, so for example, doing a meditation and practice on maybe wanting to move home and how should you do that and then suddenly in comes um, a piece of information uh, 24 hours later about the stamp duty changing you know removing your stamp duty for the next um, uh, I think until March 21 here in the UK so actually is that a sign and an indication that yes this might be a good time to sell the apartment and you've been asking about that and then something comes in and you become aware of it so there's different ways that we can work with meditation and um, there's a vast expanse of techniques for very specific things that you can learn to do in Tantra is absolutely amazing and the level and depth and power of that is very very um, strong. We're just running a, a class of people, I'll just finish off now because I'm aware that uh, we're coming to the end of the talk, but we're running a class of people at the moment of 30 people that have been doing our Tantra Level 1 uh, yoga with us online and they're actually feeling such strong effects from the various meditations and yoga practice because the yoga practice itself, our asanas, the hatha yoga that we do is also focused using concentration of the mind so it's actually meditation in each asana and each asana is a position of sacred geometry that calls in a specific resonance and allows you to access the various consciousnesses of the chakras that we have within us. So um, all of these are there and uh, we basically have people turning around and saying, do you know what Mel, I've been meditating using this particular technique and now when I close my eyes I'm actually aware of everything in the room that I'm in. It's almost like I can see it but I'm not seeing it and I'm aware of everything around me. Or people turning around and um, saying, you know, feeling huge amounts of energy in different parts of the body and then feeling like uh, an opening at the level of the heart. Um, energizing the heart and then you're starting to feel a lot of love and devotion or compassion or forgiveness to the self coming in so all kinds of things can change very very powerful things and in actual fact meditation can purify your body 
from all the negative thoughts and the negative traumas and the negative experiences you've had, it can release that energy from your body and allow you to be much more harmonious in the whole energetic state of your being. So anyway, I'll end there. That's my little introduction to Tantra uh, meditation and the power of meditation and what it can offer you. Um, and obviously, you know, the, the main things are, you know, improving the memory, developing high concentration of the mind, developing deep perception, accessing different states of being, influencing others. Um, you know, there are so many benefits it's, uh, to this stuff. They are, they are um, wonderful and very, very powerful. So whether you have uh, an, an inkling to want to come and join us, um, if you do, then we have a page that's free on Facebook, um, which is down below in the comments. And we have free meditations on there and yogic practices there that you can come and join and experience and explore with us. Um, there are replays on there, so you can do that at any time. And if you want to know more about any of this, then please feel con uh, free to contact me directly. Um, and if you want to just ask me a little bit more in depth about how maybe um, tantric meditation difference differs from mindfulness and various other practices, then I'm very happy to share that with you. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, a pleasure always to share these teachings and to share uh, the wonderful, wonderful ways in which uh, they can improve your life and benefit you and uh, just make life a lot more easy, a lot more harmonious and a lot more joyful. So that's all for me. I don't see any comments on here, so uh, sometimes they don't show up. Um, but as I said, please feel free to PM me. And also I have put below in the advert that are there any particular topics you would like to hear from me about Tantra sexuality, the feminine in Tantra, um, well, how does Tantra help with relationships, more about Tantric yoga, how it can be used to heal your body, to heal various illnesses. Um, then please let me know, just type in below or PM me about topics that you'd like me to speak about and I will happily create a talk on those particular topics. So with that, take care, God bless, and see you again at the next talk. All right, bye-bye now.